Welcome and thank you for joining the webinar today. My name is Amanda Jadrow. I'm the Portfolio Manager with Tricom. As a financial solutions provider to the staffing and consulting industry, it is our philosophy to be an active member in the staffing industry by staying abreast of the ever-changing marketplace. For that reason, Tricom was pleased to launch the Industry Insider webinar series designed to share our expert knowledge and resources with our fellow staffing industry colleagues. One of our core values is to build relationships and become a leading resource to staffing and consulting firms nationwide. Our presenter today is Steve Eisenberg. Steve is the president and founder of ASJ Partners. The staffing firm, the staffing industry's premier marketing agency. His technology background and extensive staffing industry experience provides him the expertise required to develop customized marketing plans designed for staffing and recruiting firms. Steve has an MBA in finance and marketing from St. Joseph's University and a BS in finance from Syracuse University. ASJ Partners is an expert at accelerating revenues for staffing companies through unique, customized, and highly targeted marketing programs. These industry-specific programs help staffing companies sell more, grow more, and be found more. Their expertise includes website, social media, SEO, blogging, branding, mobile apps, email marketing, and sales campaigns. Today, Steve will be presenting Generate Revenue Using Google and Your Website. In today's highly digital world, your staffing firm's internet presence is vital to growing your client and employee base. Learn how you can use the leading search engine to enhance your firm's organic search results and increase the ranking of your website. In today's Industry Insider webinar, Steve will discuss how to generate more leads via Google, how to increase the chance of being found on Google, how to grow your business without adding staff, and how to make your website a conversation tool. By the end of this session, you'll know how to use Google and your website to increase revenue. If you have any questions during the presentation, please utilize the Q&A feature located on the right toolbar. After the presentation, there will be time for questions and an opportunity for you to give us your feedback on today's webinar by completing a short exit poll. Please join me in welcoming Steve Eisenberg. Thank you, Amanda, and thank uh, you, Tricom, for setting this up. Um, as Amanda said, today we want to take you through um, Google, your websites, and Internet marketing. Marketing has grown up in the past few years, and we all know it's a talent war. Uh, almost every client I speak with today has a lot of job orders, not that we all don't want more job orders, but everyone is scrambling for the candidates. It is a cyclical business, and right now uh, everyone is looking for job seekers. So what I want to take you through is why is Google important? What are some of the key components of Google? More importantly, how do I make money? Last time I looked, we are all uh, in business to make money. Google's the new yellow pages. How does that matter? Remember, for most of us 20 years ago, if we were in business, we all spent a fair amount of money advertising in the yellow pages. That was the way people found us. They pulled out the yellow book in their geographic area. They probably went to staffing, and if we didn't have an ad there, we wouldn't be found. Google has replaced those yellow pages. And finally, how do we go viral? So here are the key components. There are, we're going to go through five of them today. The first one is Google pay-per-click. Some of you might know it as Google AdWords. The second one is Google remarketing. This is Google's newest tool. All of us have been remarketed to, and maybe we were not even aware of it. Uh, the other Google tool is SEO, search engine optimization. Probably most of us have heard about that. Uh, it's Google's most mature service. It's been around for a while, and we'll take you through the difference of the three and the pros and cons of each one. 
your website. Web technology has really significantly changed in the last year or so. Websites are becoming a conversion tool. The look and feel of websites are different. Mobile is imperative. Um, so we're going to take you through some of the new looks of the web sites and why they might be important to your firm as a competitive advantage. And then obviously blogging. Uh, you know, most of us might know a lot of these, but we're going to go through how these things might be important to us. So the first one I want to go through is Google Pay-Per-Click or Google AdWords. Uh, the reason it's called pay-per-click is when people click on your ad, there is a fee that is remitted to Google. In our industry, the fees per click run between about a dollar and a half and three and a half dollars. And I'll take you through uh, how that works and what that looks like, but that's typically what we pay on a click. Excuse me, taking a drink. Uh, Google calls pay-per-click Park Avenue. These are the ones that sit up at the top. These right here, these are what we call the paid advertisements, or in a lot of search bars, they show over here on the right. Um, the price, from a price competitive point of view, position number two is the most desirable. But either way, you're going to show up in the top three. When you get below the top three, what this would be, this would be what's called an organic search or what we would call search engine optimization. Now, the way it works is for specific keywords, and I'm going to take you through one specific client, uh, and to protect clients, this client sits kind of on the fringe of staffing, um, both a pay-per-click and a remarketing and an SEO campaign of just really for how it works and the mechanics of it. So what you typically want to do is you want to understand what keywords you would want to be found when people go to Google to look for goods and services. Remember, all of us use Google to look for goods and services. It's really the only way we find particular products that we're looking for. So the first thing you want to know is what words you want to be found on. And then even more importantly, what is the traffic on those words? There are Google tools that will let you know how many people look for specific words. Uh, for instance, when we first started out, a lot of staffing firms view themselves as a staffing agency, whereas it used to be that the clients looking for staffing agencies viewed you as an employment agency. Huge difference on Google and huge difference on the keyword volume. So you want to make sure that you're covering all the keywords that are relevant to your business. So for this particular client, coding outsourcing was the word they wanted to be found on. And as you can see, they show up in the second position. So how this works is someone goes to Google looking for a coding outsourcing firm. Uh, up comes uh, the client Transpirus. If you were to click on this keyword, it takes you to what is called a landing page. And this is a very important page. We also call this a conversion form or a conversion page. So it takes you to the client's website where you are able to navigate through the rest of the client's website, but you cannot find this website if you Googled transpires.com and went through the navigation. It is only found when you are doing on a pay-per-click advertising campaign. So what this form does is they come to this page. It shows them a little bit about the company. There's a little content. And more importantly, this conversion form. We want to have a conversion form because we want people to send us the information because now we're going to know who these people are, what they're looking for, and how to get back to them. Just as a point of reference, I convert over 60% of my leads via a pay-per-click campaign, meaning if someone finds words that I have a pay-per-click campaign running on and they fill out this form, over six times out of 10, I convert that to business. But think about that. 
that particular client was looking for something that I did. They found my keyword. They clicked on my keyword, and they were still interested enough to fill out the form and give me a call. So one of the only things I have left to do is I'm probably not the only provider that's providing that service. So it's obviously still a competitive environment, but this is what I call a very teed up lead. They were looking for me and they found me. So that is really why Google pay-per-click is important. The next step is when you're running a pay-per-click campaign, you can run that in, in congruence with remarketing or do remarketing on their own. But what happens is someone hits uh, your website and a cookie is installed. And the cookie sets up this advertisement. So if you remember before, the client was Transpirus. So an ad for Transpirus is now showing up on my terminal. And we all probably had this done to us over the uh, Christmas holiday season. If you went to any large retailer, any sporting good, Amazon, et cetera, and looked at a specific good or service, an ad for that particular product followed us around. One of the beauties of remarketing is these ads, which are called impressions, regardless of whether you click on it or not, continue to show up. And to give you an idea, I looked at uh, my, Google, my remarketing ads this week, and um, I'm running about 6,000 impressions per day. So that means my ad is showing up about 6,000 times every day on a variety of different computers. Now, Google Remarketing, similar to Google Pay Per Click, is a pay per click service by Google. So if someone were to click on this, and these clicks generally run a little bit higher, but once again, it's a little more targeted because they've been to our website and we've tagged them. So if they click and go back, the interest is significantly greater. And what happens now is we create a different landing page. And more importantly, we want the visitor to know that we know you've been to our website. So we want to tell them, welcome back. We want them to know that we know that they've been there. Same type of form, some content about the particular firm, but once again, here is this conversion form. We want people to know, we want to know exactly who's coming to our page. If we don't have this conversion form, all Google is going to be able to tell us is how we spent our budget on our pay-per-click and how many people clicked, but we're not going to know how many. Now, realistically, not everyone is going to fill out this form, but the ones that do give us the ability to follow up with them, add them to our database, and know that they are looking for the service that we have. On this particular thing, clients are seeing over 70% conversion rate because this is even more targeted than pay-per-click. They've already been to our site once. They had an ad follow them around. They clicked on that ad because they were still interested in the service that we might be providing, and they filled out the form. So as you can see, certainly in a talent war, we can have keywords that are targeted towards candidates, we can have t keywords that are targeted towards clients, or we can do both. What's even really exciting with remarketing is we can put the tag on specific pages of your website. For instance, if you only want the ad to follow around the job seeker, we will assume that the people that hit the job seeker page are predominantly the job seeker, and the ad that follows them around can say, still looking for that job or whatever we want it to be, or we can make a more generic tag and tag the home page that we're gonna follow anyone around, or we can do both. So it's very targeted from Google. It's relatively new, probably in the last two to three years. You've probably had it done to you, but more importantly, this is the fastest growing aspect, and certainly in the staffing industry, a small percentage of the firms are doing this, 
So it affords you a competitive advantage to be ahead of the curve and be ahead of your competition. SEO, organic search, uh, we've all probably heard about this. Uh, to be honest, this is becoming more and more difficult to get clients to the home page. This is Google's most mature service. Uh, firms have been doing it some now for 10 years. Um, if, a, if you are on page four or five, it's going to be very difficult generally, and it's a slow process to move you up to the top of page one. So we strategically have been moving most of our clients to the pay-per-click and the remarketing because A, you'll get a much faster ROI, and all of us like to get a faster ROI, plus it's much more immediate. Uh, it does not mean that you should not do SEO. It does not mean that SEO is not important. It's just understanding your probability of where you are, how likely you are to get to the top of page one, and how long it might take you to get there. So just understand that if you're looking to spend on a recurring basis. Like I said, it doesn't mean you shouldn't do it. Just understand that it might be a little bit of a long haul. And as we went there before, you know, SEO, similar to pay-per-click, understand uh, the words that you want to be found on, understand the volume of those words. It's great that you might show up number one or number two on organic search, but if only five people are doing that search, there's probably better words that you might want to be found on. So kind of understand your strategic goal of where people want to find you and match that with the volume that Google has on those specific words. Blogging. Most of us understand blogging, but blogging has three or four really important intrinsic values. One, as you can see, um, this is a blog post of ours that shows up on number one on the, on the organic search, and why that happens is each blog has a unique URL from your website. Because your blog is a page on your website, each blog has a unique URL. So by blogging, you're increasing the chances that one of your blog posts along with your website permeate up to the top. If you were to do a blog every week, at the end of next year, you now have 52 blog links plus your website for the chance of showing up at the top, so you've significantly increased the chance of someone finding you for specific goods or services. The other really important uh, thing with blogging is taking your blog and sharing it through LinkedIn. You and members of your teams should be joining as many groups in LinkedIn where clients and or candidates are members. This is really the, uh, the golden gem of blogging. Most of us are in LinkedIn groups and most of us get summaries from these LinkedIn groups. And if you pay attention, you have about 5% of the people pushing about 95% of the traffic in these LinkedIn groups. And what starts to happen is you are keeping your name or other members of your team's name and your company's name top of mind because they keep seeing the content that you are pushing through these LinkedIn groups. And to give you an idea, I pulled a page uh, from my website. Actually, it looks like it was pulled it almost a year ago. But if you see, there was 54 page views on the day. But look how many of the top 10 visits came from blog posts. Three of the top 10 traffic drivers to my website in that one day came from blog posts. So when you're blogging, you go to your Google Analytics and you're able to see how many people are coming to your website from LinkedIn and from your blogs. More importantly, it lets you know what particular topic 
is drawing the most traffic to you. So between the SEO values of blogging and driving more traffic to your website through blogging, you can see where blogging is very important. And then obviously, finally, Google will reward firms whose website has fresh content or new content on it compared to a firm that doesn't put new content on it. I mean, think about it from Google's perspective. If you always have new content on your website, you look more relevant than maybe a competitor or another firm who is not putting new content on their website. So blogging still has a lot of intrinsic values. Uh, now your website. If most of us have started to look around, there's been a huge change in the technology of websites. There's what's called flat design. Uh, there's another term called parallax. Uh, obviously, you know, putting our job boards and making them mobile are imperative. Doing SEO setup and making it mobile compatible. So what I want to do is kind of take you through some of the new technologies in websites today. Oops, hold on, let me go back here, whoops. Apologize. Minor issue here. All right, well, apologize, it's not working, but let me try one more time. Oops, all right, sorry for that. We're having uh, mechanical issues. Um, but what this is, is if you're starting to see some websites now, when you go to the landing page, the websites are partitioned. I'm looking for the perfect employer. I'm looking for work. Makes it real easy. We know which one we are, and we click, and we peel into that particular website. Does this one work? Nope. Sorry about that. Okay, this one was a parallax where if you've seen um, pictures slide on top of pictures, you scroll all the way down. It used to be websites or what we called above the fold where everything showed on our computer. Now everything is scrolling down and down and down. And then when you click on these different navigations, it slides down and takes us to that particular uh, section on the website. Even more importantly now, this is a uh, particular client that has a video running in the background. So there's a lot of different things you can do, and the important element with this new technology is job seekers are starting to realize how relevant and how new your website is because they're going to a fair amount of sites that are in these new designs. So I'm not telling you that you need to change your website now, but keep in your mind, look at some of your competitors and see where your website and the technology is stacks up compared to some of your competitors. Mobile. So what I did is I took a screenshot of a, a mobile client site and you notice that it's very different. Uh, there's a lot of interesting things that we want to do on a mobile site. If what the websites that we track, almost 70% of the job seeker traffic is coming to your website via mobile platform. So you need to understand that and you need to make the mobile viewing experience for them a positive one. So when you're mobile, similar look and feel as your desktop, but it gets reformatted a little. We like to add what we call little access buttons. If they click here, automatically on their phone pops up your phone number so they can call you. They click on the little envelope, they can send you an email. The menu is right here. They click and it drops down. It'll take them to a specific section. And more importantly, you want to Google your mobile site on your phone and see if Google has tagged it as mobile friendly. Google had started penalizing last year firms that do not have mobile compatible, mobile friendly websites. So you can very easily check that. You go on your phone, you go into the browser and look for yourself and when the link comes up, it'll say whether it's mobile compatible in Google's eyes or not. So you wanna make sure that that happens as well. 
And finally, just kind of taking you through a summary today. Uh, I apologize if we went a little too fast, but wanted to cover a bunch of things. As I said, Google is the new Yellow Pages. Uh, people go to Google looking for goods and services. If we are not showing up, there's no way that they can possibly contact us because they don't know that we exist. It's probably one of the fastest growing aspects, certainly in the staffing industry, and it has been for many other industries for a few years now. Uh, using Google is going to help you be top of mind. We all know that staffing is somewhat of an impulse business, and someone goes running into the decision maker and needs some jobs filled. We want to make sure that we are keeping our brand in front of them. And when job seekers are looking for jobs, that we're keeping our brand in front of them and covering all the bases where either a client or a job seeker would go looking either for a job or our service. Um, so we're going to go to the questions and answer session. Amanda, do you want to uh, take over? or? Yes, okay. So we do have a few questions that have come in. If you have any questions as we're going through these, please go ahead and use either the chat feature or the Q&A section, and then I can read them off for you. So the first one is, what is the difference between Google pay-per-click and Google remarketing? Okay, great question. So the pay-per-click is when you go to Google and you do a keyword search, for specific words, they are going to be the ones that show up in the top and there's a little icon that says advertisement or the ones that show on the right hand side and these are paid advertisers. So that is the Google pay per click. The remarketing is another step where when someone visits our website, no matter how they found us, whether they organically typed us in, they found us on Google or whatever, we install what's called a cookie on their browser and an ad for your particular firm will start to follow them around. So the difference is, one, we are going to Google and we're doing specific keywords, pay-per-click or AdWords. We tag people when they come to our website and we follow them around Google remarketing. And in the Google remarketing, where does that ad appear for the user? Okay, those are great questions. So when you do a remarketing uh, campaign, you make ads of different sizes. And there's about five or di different sizes ads that you make. And you submit them into Google for your campaign and then Google determines where those ads get placed on what type of sites. So sometimes you might see it as a banner ad, sometimes you might see it as a square ad, sometimes you might see it as a rectangle. So you create the five or six different size ads and then Google's algorithm will start putting that around. Um, and the beauty with all of these pay-per-clicks is remember, we can set our budget on a daily basis. And this is how Google keeps making money. So if you decide you want to spend $300 a month on Google ads, that's $10 a day. As soon as you spend the $10 a day, your ads will stop showing. Or when people do a keyword search, you will not show up in the top on Park Avenue. So that's Google's way of protecting you so you have some control of how much money you spend. Okay, great. Which service can get me to the top of the Google ranking? Um, the one that you know we can get clients to the top of starting the next day is the pay-per-click because you can get clients in, in Park Avenue, one through three, uh, when, fairly easily. Organically, uh, if you're not on the first page, it's probably going to take a fair amount of work and it's probably going to take a fair amount of time because the people that are above you have probably been doing it for a while. A lot of times they're a lot bigger firms. I had a client call me that he was very upset he was number three on an organic search. And when I asked him who two and one was, he told me it was Monster and Career Builder. 
and I had to have a discussion with him to tell them that he's probably not going to beat those two. So you need to understand from an SEO perspective that it might take some time, um, but pay-per-click, we can get you to the top right away. And you mentioned keyword volume. Looking at the volume on each keyword, how do you find the volume? How do you find out Google the ranking? And, and that's a great question. Google has some tools, um, and we can certainly let you know what some of those tools are, that you put in a keyword and Google will let you sh know the ranking. So that's certainly important when you're doing any type of work on Google, whether you're doing SEO or pay-per-click, you want to match the keywords that fit your particular business with the keywords on Google that have the most traffic. Okay. How long will it take to convert my website to a newer version? Typically, websites take about 60 to 75 days. And, and we throw that number out because obviously there's a lot of factors going on. Um, but, you know, probably, you know, a, a good time frame is, you know, two, two and a half months to come up with a new website. Okay. How can blogging help me grow my business? Well, blogging can help you grow your business if you looked back when I showed you the Google Analytics of the people coming to my website. You can see that when, when I look at the blogs that I put on my site and I track it back to my website, typically the people are spending over two minutes on my website and looking at over two pages of my website. So can I do an exact ROI and say how much more money that's making me? Not really, to be honest. But if that many people are coming back to my site and three of the top ten visits coming to my site that day came from blogs and they're viewing other pages on my blogs, I have to make an inference that that's turning into revenue somehow. It's also helping you when you go in these LinkedIn groups, if any of you are in a lot of these states ASA groups, I'm sure you've seen that I push some blogs through and keep an eye of who's pushing some of these blogs in. There's probably a handful of people pushing all the blogs. So you could be one of those handful of people pushing content in the groups where either your clients are members of and or candidates. How often should I update content on my website? Great question. Um, from a blogging perspective, probably uh, once a week is really a good amount. Um, but another way to have new content is if you have a website and you have an automatic feed from your applicant tracking system, you have the ability to do what we call hot jobs. And what that is, is it's taking the most recent jobs you have that you input into your applicant tracking system and bringing them right to your home page. So that does two things. One, every time a job seeker comes to your website, chances are they're probably seeing new jobs. And two, you're pushing content along with content on your blogs. And from Google's perspective, there's always new information showing on your website. So. I hope Great. that answered that question. Yes, absolutely. Uh, how do I know if I have a true mobile website? Go to, um, on your phone, go into your browser and Google your, your own company. And when the link comes up, right below your company name, it should say mobile friendly. And how difficult is it to create a mobile website if you have an existing website but not a mobile? Um, it's not that hard. Uh, you know, assuming your, your website was done in WordPress, which I see sites since we've done in probably about since about 2011 or 12 has been in WordPress, so probably everyone has a WordPress site. I mean, it's probably something that takes a few weeks to convert it.
It doesn't look like I have any other questions that have come in yet. Um, as people are um, completing the poll, um, if you wouldn't mind going to the next slide. Oh, that, that is the last slide here with the contact information. So if you would like to find out more information about um, your website or um, how to generate revenue using Google, please reach out to, to Steve or myself if there's any other questions that we can answer for you and, and have an offline conversation. Are there other good tips that um, you'd like to share with the audience today before we wrap it up, some great takeaways? Yeah, I mean, I, I think some tips are just understand that, you know, the parameters of business have changed today. And as I said before, it, it's a talent war out there. So you need to make sure that you're trying to, and all of us, you know, don't have unlimited resources, so all understand that, but you're trying to make yourself be found in as many places as possible because when the job seeker specifically or a client is looking for us, we want to make sure that they have the ability to find us. So if they're going to Google and we're not in Google, you know, there's probably a chance that they can't call us and they'll probably call a competitor of ours. Um, you know, if we're not pushing content in LinkedIn, um, probably some of our competitors are pushing content in LinkedIn. Think about when you first started link using LinkedIn several years ago, before everyone in the industry did it, you had a little bit of a competitive advantage because you were probably finding candidates that maybe other staffing firms weren't finding. Now everyone's using LinkedIn. So some of these Google services, we're still in the early adopter stage. So if you can be one of the people to jump on a little quicker than some of your competitors, you might be able to capture a little bigger market share. So think about just making sure that we keep our brand in front of our clients through as many ways as we're comfortable and obviously fits within you know, some of the financial limitations that all of us deal with. Fantastic. Well, I'd like to thank our participants in today's webinar, and Steve, I'd like to thank you for sharing your knowledge of how to generate revenue using Google and your website. The recording of this web webinar will be on our website at tricom.com. It's under the Resources and Industry Insider Webinars tab. Thank you again for your participation, and watch for information on our next webinar session. Have a great afternoon. Thank you.